Hello and welcome back to the Soul Pathway podcast. I am Andy Bryan from the Soul Pathway and today I'm here with my good friend uh, Kaska Graham and today we're going to speak about the surrendering of the Divine Feminine and I'm sure there are many of you on the Twin Flame journey connecting with your Divine Counterpart and you're aware that the energies are quite intense right now. So today we're going to be speaking about how we can begin to surrender uh, to the Divine Feminine in order to connect with our Divine Masculine in a different way. So before we get started, welcome Kaska, tell us a bit more about yourself again, who you are and what you do. Hello Andy, um, thank you so much for inviting me um, to come onto your amazing show again. Um, it is always such an honour and blessing to uh, to work with you and to have a beautiful 45 minutes to an hour with you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, my, my name is Kathka Graham and um, I'm a diaconic healer and a spiritual teacher. Um, and a lot of people ask me, what is a diaconic healer? Well, I was actually given um, the title and um, the attunements by my guides, um, by my guides. And um, as you know, I work very much uh, with uh, mental health, addictions, shadow work. Um, but I have also, um, you know, apart from also teaching a lot of workshops, you know, I teach angelic Reiki, I teach my own modality, which I've created, which is dragon reiki um and various other workshops and um i am this for the past six months i have started to um to connect very much to the feminine and um yeah. and uh the the twin flame journey has been coming at me from all different angles very much so with my one-to-one -one clients um and students and um I, in March, um, I started doing um, some ceremonies, um, working with the collective energy of the divine feminine. Yeah. And uh, wow is all I can say, because yeah. um, again, my guides came forward and actually explained to me that through ceremony and through my work, um, I would be doing a lot of releasing uh, for the divine feminine. Yeah. And um, very powerful work very very powerful work and um and wow so much stuff coming up and uh me really acknowledging what it is that's going on here and having a very clear view and being shown very very clearly what we're actually doing here as we are healing yeah. um in order to create this magnificent union um and to balance out our own masculine and feminine so, um, you know, so again, this is a, a very big topic, as you know, and um, I think I'm going to try and keep it <laughs> um, as kind of, you know, on topic as, as possible. Um, yeah. But, you know, what one thing that is very, very important here is um, we really need to understand that this journey that we are on now is really about healing and love and that is it it is about healing and love and this is where we are at now um, and I can't wait to share with you um, uh, what has been going on during this um, this clearing and this releasing and this surrendering um, as I'm doing this work so yeah absolutely amazing and it's interesting isn't it when we embrace and connect with a twin flame how we embody this beautiful love you know this high vibration of love which is all consuming as i've mentioned in previous videos so how do we begin to surrender that that's an interesting one because i find you know with the twin flame energy because it's so strong and we're so embodied by this love surrender is probably one of the most challenging tasks because it brings us to our knees we feel so much pain of release and yet it's so essential isn't it yeah absolutely do you know andy um i want to uh i'd like to just begin and say to you that the the this this coming together 
of the divine feminine and the divine masculine, as you know, is such an incredibly powerful process, okay? Yeah. And, you know, on one side, you have this, this beautiful, almost romantic kind of feel to this two parts coming together and you've got all this, you know, the stuff that people dream of, okay? Yeah. But as a lot of us know, this is a powerful union that isn't just about rainbows and hearts and stars. And this is the mirroring of shadows, okay? This is our, our counterpart coming in. So when I said to you earlier about this union being about love and healing, it totally is because the unconditional love between the divine masculine and divine feminine is there. All right. Yeah. It doesn't it, it, it can't be tampered with. It can't be um, it, it can't be touched. It's already there. The healing is already there as well. Yeah. And what happens when these two counterparts start coming together is firstly, um, normally before um, the twin flames actually connect within the physical, they start to feel the pull. They start to feel the pull. And many people, there's many people that um, that say to me, you know, Cass, I, ha I since I was a child, I have felt that pull, that absolute pull. And it's yeah. it, it's it's that is the feeling that is the feeling. And, and as we move through life, it gets stronger and that pull connects us to our Kundalini energy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because as we are growing, evolving, healing and working on ourselves, so is our counterpart doing exactly the same thing. And when I get clients that say to me, I've got this pull and I'm feeling like someone's coming and it's actually debilitating me, but there's no one there. And I'm like, continue working on yourself, continue yeah. working on yourself, because as you're doing this work, your other half is 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 doing the work as well. And this is how you kind of come together. It's this beautiful swirling of energies. So you feel it. Oh, one one thing I wanted to mention here, which I thought mm. I find is really important with all this. I, I'm a, I'm, I am a firm believer that we do work together. Like one, mm -hmm. one counterpart does the healing. The other one does the healing as well. But mm -hmm. in, in another way, I do believe it's so essential for us to focus on our own healing as well. And not so much our counterpart because we Absolutely. have so much to do within ourselves that it's not so much reliant on our counterpart but but looking Absolutely. within working through our shadow and noticing what is mirroring back to us because if we are ignoring that and and i don't mean to be condescending in any way to to twin flames no, but, not at um, all. i think there are many of us who, who find it so challenging within these energies that, that they might find it difficult to surrender, let go and release, which is which is essential what this video is all about today. Yeah. Um, but it, it really starts with ourselves, even before our twin flames, isn't it, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, we, that, that journey of self-healing is, as you said, it is the most important thing that we've come to do that's what it is it's what we've come to do and as as that connection with that twin flame energy comes in you know again as i mentioned before what what ends up happening although this is powerful and it's magnetic and it's beyond anything that you'd ever feel before okay and please don't think i'm not discrediting really strong soulmates connections because i'm not because yeah. soulmate connections are, are are magnificent okay they are magnificent but it's all about healing and growth and learning okay um Definitely. but this twin flame energy is is it's amped up it's amped up a lot mm -hmm. but you know i was sent an image um about uh, uh, like a meme meme <laughs> um yeah. and it was like it, the the image was cut in half and on one side you had the 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 cups and saucers fairground ride yeah. right and underneath <laughs> it said soulmate and the other side was a roller coaster <laughs> it's a twin yeah, that's exactly it, and it? Yeah. 
That's exactly what it is. It, there's nothing easy about the journey, okay? And the reason why it's not easy, it is because it's all about healing and it's about going deep within the nitty gritty. And if you've got work to do, your twin flame is going to reveal that to you. They're going to reveal your insecurities, the stuff that you haven't worked on, your, your, bar, your blockages, your barriers, your abandonment issues, all the things that you haven't worked on, your twin flame is going to reveal, okay? And it's how you choose to move forward your twin flame cannot heal you they cannot heal you they can reveal what needs what needs to be done but ultimately you've got to be responsible for your work and vice versa okay so yeah. coming to to speak about the surrendering all right which is just oh so beautiful i want to talk about our soul and how old this beautiful soul is, okay? And again, I'm speaking as a woman and as the feminine today, all right? So um, I, would, I want to explain the process of surrendering here because there's nothing easy about it. There's nothing easy about it, okay? And, and we have to surrender on an energetic level um, because it begins there. So I would like to speak about some of the actual traumas that we carry when it comes to relationships. And when I was actually in the process of, of, of doing some, uh, some, some shadow work for the collective and for the divine feminine, um, I was in, a, in a, deep, a deep kind of state and I went right back to the times of, um, of, you know, the witch trials and the witch burnings. And I was shown very clearly um, the type of thing that we are dealing with. Now, this is just one example, okay, because you can imagine how many they are, because when you look at women and you look at what woman, and this is no discredit to the beautiful divine masculine, again, I'm speaking on behalf of, of, of the feminine here and the woman, but um, when you look at what women have had to go through over, over, you know, over hundreds of years, the oppression, the sexual trauma, the betrayal, the abandonment, you know, the, the abuse, all of that kind of stuff. And men ha also have. Um, so, again, I'm not discrediting men, but um, this is the stuff that um, we are clearing. It's not just from this lifetime, OK, Definitely. because we carry this within our souls. So because even if we were a man in a previous lifetime, we still would have understood that on, a, on, on the masculine level. It, it's always been there. It's always been there because male and female have always been doing their thing. Otherwise, none of us would never be here. OK. Yeah, yeah. And when it comes to our twin flame, we haven't met them in every single lifetime. But, yes, they have come in dribs and drabs. OK. And um, so I was taken to this. Um, to the time of the, the witch trials and um, and I was shown um, probably the worst case scenario of of trauma that you could get and it wasn't even the the, the physical um, this this was um, you know of of the ma a male coming into a woman's life all right absolutely loving her allowing her to fully surrender herself opening herself up in all of her glory, connecting him to source, which we know that's what happens when a woman truly surrenders, connecting him to source, sharing absolutely everything, okay? And then having a knock at her door and realizing that this was the man that was about to light her stake, okay? Because he'd just kind of taken all of everything and then, that was part of the plan, all right? And so this is an example of how deep, how yeah. deep some of the trauma is that we are trying to release here. And when it comes to women, there are some serious trust issues when it comes to men, some deep-rooted mm -hmm. trust issues, all right? Um, and you might get some women that say, oh, no, no, I, I don't have any of that. But when you really go into it, yes, there is, because it's about, am I good enough? Are you going to hurt me? Can I open up to you? Am I pretty enough? Am I sexy enough? Uh, you know, am I good enough when yeah. it comes to lovemaking? There's all, I mean, I know that men have these, these the, the same kind of um, uh, issues, but, you know, we we are we we are in a space where th those types of things really need to be cleared because here's the important bit andy 
as we know the power of the feminine okay and as we are as our feminine is rising up and we are essentially um supporting this entire process of of moving this shift of mother earth you know all of these powerful beautiful women are coming together connecting to themselves and understanding but we cannot do this work without our counterpart our divine masculine and how are we totally supposed to do this healing work without fully surrendering and trusting our our divine masculine and so when it comes to surrendering we've got to go through all of those tiny little layers which are so so deep and i yeah. felt that when i have done this these ceremonies i have felt that depth and i i did a live the other the other week and i was touching on this andy let me tell you this stuff is dark it's very it's deep. like yeah, it's very very it's, deep thick it's sludgy it's a lot of it doesn't even have a name because we aren't fully even aware of of, of what has gone on with the divine feminine okay a lot of it hasn't even been shared it, it, it's dark okay yeah and and as you know how sacred the energy is of the divine feminine you know we are the mothers you know and i'm not just speaking about you know physically having children but we are the mothers of this earth we are here to work with Gaia and help humanity heal in such a beautiful way. But we can't do this unless our masculine are holding us. And women have become so powerful on their own through lack of trust when it comes to the divine masculine. It's not going to work. Yeah. It's not going to work if we don't trust. So when we surrender, we have to fully surrender on an energetic level. And what I was shown through this process was probably one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen and experienced in my life. It was the intention of surrendering and releasing, okay, but actually allowing every single fiber of the energetic body to slowly start to move out all right and mm -hmm. gently connect and wrap itself around the energy of the divine masculine so that the metamorphosis that needs to take place is of two yeah, yeah. two counterparts not one all right what a beautiful magnificent process but it's a slow, gentle, loving process, but there is no way that as the divine feminine needs to step forward and do this work, our divine masculine, we can't not surrender without, yeah. you know, because we can't do it. The surrendering is the key ingredient and it's working through all of those layers, which are definitely unreal. Definitely. And, and I would say with, with all that as well, going back to going back to self, we first need to surrender ourselves from our twin flame, you know, and I think yeah. that may seem about a bit counterproductive with regards to what you're no. saying in, in regards to union. But if we can, you know, detach and surrender and let go and release, because, you know, you look at the, the feminine programming, which you were speaking about a lot there, which is, which was very interesting and, and very important to, to, to look at in order to heal and, you know and trans transform transmute the energies but also the energy of the masculine the masculine holds so much energy with regards to the oppression and really being tied to con the, to the conditioning of what's happened as well and there's there is a lot of shame in that as well so the masculine also has to release connect with their inner feminine yeah. in order to in order to embrace but um in order to the, for the feminine to surrender i just i just feel that um they need to release themselves from that masculine um not to completely cut the ties but to say look i need to honor and love me but from that mm -hmm. beautiful divine feminine place where they've also embraced aspects of their own inner masculine as well you know mm -hmm. it is beautiful and you know what you're saying about the divine masculine 
the part of the surrendering process is the divine masculine starts to really see the actual and experience the true beauty of the divine feminine and what and and the true unconditional love that comes from this energy you know the the the, the process the process that takes place is so incredibly sacred yeah. and so incredibly beautiful the merging of these two but you can't just go boom all right cool let's get let, let's get this show on the road it really isn't about that it is a beautiful slow process but as the surrendering of the divine feminine starts to take place the softening almost of the divine masculine starts to come in yeah. allowing yeah. as the divine masculine starts to soften so those beautiful fibers those energetic fibers are able to weave into him enabling them to become one enabling them to become one because you know the divine masculine you know you know as a man you know what you guys are holding okay it's a lot of blocks and restrictions it's a lot of you know the heart being very protected and not allowing and in order for this process to happen the divine masculine really needs to soften yeah it doesn't make them weak because it's not about that it's about the soul and the heart softening in order to allow that 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 integrating to take yeah, place yeah, um, yeah. and when this happens for the Div divine masculine this is when they start to connect to the real beauty the real beauty of the feminine and as they are seeing that beauty of the feminine they start to see their beauty and vice versa because it's a mirror it's a mirror and the divine feminine starts to recognize their beauty because this is the thing over you know over the years it, you know women have forgotten how beautiful they truly are yeah yeah you know definitely. they've forgotten but as the divine masculine starts to recognize this within them they then start to recognize it within themselves and you've got this beautiful kind of energetic exchange really recognizing the beauty within the counterpart Mm. Oh, how beautiful. <laughs> and uh, one, one thing I wanted to mention there as well with regards to the masculine, you know, I feel what's interesting is we look at the collective energies with regards to the, to the masculine energy and the oppression of women. And we look at, you know, the, the witch trials and, and uh, what happened there as well, which is completely tragic. But one thing I've come to connect with myself with, was the wounding of the masculine collectively oh. and the the oppression and victimization of men in society nowadays and i don't want to bring this up too much but the realization that Nothing. we're not coming to a place of because women have been oppressed now it's men's turn it's like mm -hmm. no no this is this is about loving honoring and appreciating one another for the beauty That's of who true. we are you know allowing men to be the vulnerable to be the emotional, to be the connected, connect with their inner feminine, yeah. but honor the fact that there are wounds and there are men, let's say, that operate out of, you know, you could say toxic masculinity, but that goes into a yeah. slightly different subject, but it's, it's really honoring one another and loving each other within it. Um, and my friend shared something the other week I thought was fantastic. Um, she, she said so, so, something about marla kelly actually I interviewed her before but about honoring the masculine and noticing and seeing the beauty of the masculine because we speak so much about women and the beauty of the feminine energy which i think is amazing but often it's men that seem to be neglected and so mm. when i saw that i thought that's beautiful thank you so much for Absolutely. for for honoring and seeing the beauty and the divine, divine masculine within men. Yeah. yeah. I love that, Andy. And, you know, this is the thing. You know, we as the feminine, we need our masculine. We need our masculine. It's not a case of, you know, being told that women are weak because they need a man or you know it's it's not about that we need our masculine we need our counterpart um to to love us 
to also hold us to 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 allow us to grow and shine and vice versa you know this the beauty of the masculine when it, when when the masculine starts to lower its it it it's it's kind of restrictions that is one of the most magnificently beautiful thing because things because when that takes place the masculine makes time to understand the feminine yeah it embraces all of the qualities that before was responding almost out of fear and 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 lack of understanding okay it and and there is opportunity opportunity for so much growth for the masculine in that place because when women are just given time to be in their feminine okay the masculine has is able to really grow and shine through that process yeah. um and i love that what you said because the divine masculine is beautiful and as it is stepping up and 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 more men are stepping into their truth their true energy and i say men you know i i i'm not trying to to discriminate here i'm just kind of just you know this the the masculine and feminine is within us it's within us you know but and it's about balancing our own it, you know it's not just about the two you know individuals it's about our own masculine and feminine but when when this happens um the masculine becomes stronger yeah. and this is it as as they are surrendering and becoming softer yeah. in actual fact they are becoming so much more powerful and so much stronger yeah you know isn't Definitely. that just Definitely. isn't that stunning <laughs> i think that's absolutely beautiful it is it is when that strength really comes through isn't it and yeah. the reason why I wanted to ma mention the masculine a bit here as well with regards to surrendering is because it seems like within the Twin Flame communities, we place a lot of pressure on our masculine. Our masculine is not doing this. Our masculine is not doing that. Why are they not responding to me? Why, the, why, are they not, why are they not doing their own healing? Yet deep down, we don't often realize what they're doing behind the scenes. Yeah. And, and yet it's, it's a realization. Let's, let's love and honor ourselves. You know those those who are embracing the feminine energy love on yourselves take a step away allow yourself to surrender release yourself from this connection and then allow the masculine to step up in their own way because yeah. that's what the beauty really is i feel you know ah oh, absolutely it, it and it is so beautiful it is so beautiful um you know there's nothing more powerful than a masculine doing his own work yeah you know, it is, it's, that's the true warrior within, you know, that is what it is, that it's not, you know, when we look at a warrior, um, you know, we have this idea of, you know, wars going on and men running out there protecting their, their land, their people, whatever it is, their freedom, but actually a true warrior is the man who does his own work, okay, because that's, yeah. that is the biggest battle or war you will ever come across you know it's that internal and there's a lot of work for the masculine to do because mm. they have been very disconnected from thyself very through conditioning um and it's a big old job it's a big old job when they finally start to connect to their blueprint you know and, and a real a warrior old. of the masculine is is really actually the embodiment of the heart you know warrior of the heart with that altruistic intent we're coming from that place of love and you know wanting to transform and shift and change within themselves and obviously to shift the collective as well isn't it you know yeah beautiful <laughs> so let's let's speak a, a bit more about about um you know how how would someone first begin to surrender you know how would we first begin to surrender to our twin flame that we can release and and love honor and appreciate ourselves within this do you know andy the first step is the recognition and not running away from the stuff that starts to surface yeah okay um because you know we for protection we have we suppress so much when the twin flame connection starts it's 
we are not, it's not a time to suppress. And that might sound a little bit weird um, because actually we shouldn't really suppress anything. But in particular, when the twin flame energy comes, it's always divinely guided. And, um, you know, it's the thing that really, you know, most of the time when the twin flame comes in, it's when you least expect it. But that's your time. That is the time. And there's no denying it. You can't pretend it's not happening and you cannot suppress the stuff that starts to reveal itself and so once it does once it does you've got to go in and face it you've got to go in and face it you know I I'm I've got a lot of clients at the moment that are connecting with their twin flames and it's always the same kind of story the same kind of feelings the same kind of emotions how is it raw raw as hell that's the that's the best way to explain it because it's come out it's got nothing around it to protect it it just reveals itself and it's yeah. raw but that process in itself is absolutely magnificent honor that healing because that counterpart has come to you to go hey I'm here doing my job so that you start to heal because we are here ascending all right. Yeah. And you can't take this stuff with you. Yeah. And it needs to be cleared for you and for the collective, because that's what we're doing here. We're not messing around. So I'm here and you do the work alongside me or on your own, however you choose to do it. But if you choose to deny it, it's going to keep coming back yeah, and it's going to be more brutal. So yeah. This is not to scare people because what I really want to say is this process in itself is powerfully wonderful. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the best gift that could ever come your way because this whole existence is about clearing and the soul evolving because that's all we're doing here. Yeah. <laughs> that's all we're doing, Definitely. not really anything else. So when this comes forward, Face it, grab it, hold it, okay? You know, Andy, that I run my regular mindfulness workshops, okay? And funnily enough, tomorrow my workshop is about transmuting pain, okay? Mm. Because when we mindfully have to release and start surrendering stuff, there's no way you can surrender anything unless you understand it, okay? Yeah, because exactly. it's yeah. if you understand it, then you you are able to sit with it and the surrendering process is a natural. If you don't understand it, you're going to be at war with it. There's going to be no surrendering there. Okay. Those are your only options. There aren't any other options. It's about gently embracing it and sitting with it so that it can surrender. Okay. Yeah. Honoring all that you are, all that you are. Okay. Your beautiful, magnificent self. Definitely. All right. Dark and light. Or the other option is you're at war with it and you're never going to surrender anything that way. Okay. That's what you're faced with. Yeah. So the first step is to be in full acceptance of everything that you are acknowledging and to be able to go, okay, I'm ready for this. And the best way is through gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for revealing to me what I need to surrender and let go. So yeah, that would be, that is the first step. Yeah, and no, I, I agree with you there. I agree with you there. It's about being raw. But what does <laughs> yeah. raw, what does rawness allow us to be? It allows us to be truly authentic. And there's beauty and authenticity. Authenticity is the ultimate truth in many ways. How can we yeah. be the, the, the fullness in who we are, the light, the darkness, the shadow, yeah. and, um, you know, all those supposed ugly parts of ourselves. Each and every yeah. aspect of ourselves is beautiful in its own unique way. Beautiful. If only you allow yourself to see it, you know. Yeah, that's it. You know, Andy, last Wednesday, the workshop that I delivered was um, about removing the mask or masks yeah. that prevent us from being our authentic self. And actually, the workshop itself was quite emotional because, you know, I said this to you earlier, I channel my workshops, I channel everything that comes through. And, um, and, you know that it was it was actually just by going you are absolutely beautiful and perfect you are a magnificent being for 
all that you are, for all that you are, because why would you be in judgment of oneself? Judgment is, is the external. It's something that's being conditioned into us. Yeah. Embrace everything, the dark and the light, because again, this is what you've come to do, nothing else. It's about really embracing all that you are, because even if there's a part of you that that is considered to be not very nice and considered to be very nasty, if you're seeing it like that all the time, you're never going to surrender it, okay? Yeah. But the minute you go, do you know what? You're actually quite funny. You keep popping up and, and you change your relationship and the way you view it, that is when you become authentic. Yeah, that is me. That is me. And every other person in this whole world has their own. We are no different. There is not one person that can sit here and say, I am all light and fluffy and wonderful and, and all of those things because we are the yin and the yang. <laughs> we are the masculine and the feminine. So I don't want to we... interject too much here, but it's, that's just love and light rubbish really isn't it <laughs> it totally is <laughs> the bs it's of the totally love and light brigade is. you know let's yeah, let's just yeah, focus on love and light and not focus on ourselves you know yeah and those masks exactly. are really what the love and light is all about how do we just project the light out to the world and, and put on this face and put on this mask and say this is who we are we're this beautiful and amazing people we've got no shadow the shadow doesn't exist yeah. yet there is beauty in the shadow we allow ourselves to see it we let down those masks and we say screw love and light Love, light, and shadow. That's all it is. <laughs> Absolutely. The brighter the light, the more the shadow is revealed. And that is how wonderful it is. That's how beautiful the process is. The more light, the more the shadow goes, hi. <laughs> they can't go without each other. They cannot. And it's, it's not about clearing the shadow. It's not about clearing it. It's not about letting it go. It's about accepting it and loving it and, and, and surrendering. That is what it is. You know, it's not about letting it go. No, no, we don't need to do that. But we do need to be able to manage it because when the shadow starts to to take over and it debilitates our existence, that's when it's not being managed properly. And there's no way you're going to manage it through fear, anger, you know, resentment, all those. It doesn't work like that. You can't manage it. You can't manage a business through those types of um, energy, which mean those types of emotions. So you're never going to be able to manage your internal shadows. They've got to yeah. be accepted. They've got to be accepted. That's the only way this process can happen. Yeah. And I know with within our last conversation, which wasn't too long ago, actually, you know, we were speaking about mindfulness for mental health and um, a lot of what we spoke about there was grounding. And the most incredible way to ground is to fully accept and appreciate the wholeness of who you are, because yeah. it's like, this is who I am. This is the way I express myself in this world and this is the way I live my life. You know, it's that. It's that grounding in peace, which is beautiful, isn't it? You know, it's beautiful grounding into the shadow. <laughs> it's good. Could be a. It could be another good conversation, couldn't it? You know, how yeah, to ground into absolutely. the shadow. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it, Andy. I love it, and you know what? Um, what a wonderful topic that we've, uh, you know, we've touched on today. I mean, we know that you know, there's never. You know, there's never enough time to talk about all that we want to talk about. Um, and this topic just leads into so many different avenues. It all it's all interconnected. But, you know, this surrendering is a key. It's the key ingredient. It's the key ingredient. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there. Completely agree with you that um, it is the key. And, you know, surrender in its rawness is, oh, it's, it can feel heartbreaking, can be de feel debilitating at times. It can break our heart open in ways that we didn't expect it. The pain is revealed, the rawness is, is shown, but there's, there's a lot of beauty within that because we start to feel who we are and love it, oh, don't we, you know? Beautiful, so. beautiful, beautiful. Mm. But I think, yeah, I, I, I love this conversation as well. I love, I love speaking about how we can surrender in the most beautiful of ways. 
And, uh, you know, in a, in a funny way, we could say there's not really much beauty about surrendering because it's pretty ugly at times. But once we get through it, that's when we find the beauty on the other side, don't we? So. Absolutely. Because, do you know, ultimately, our higher self sees the entire process as beautiful. Mm. Okay. That's the thing, Andy. When you're in it and you've got the mental going on and, and the pain and all that kind of stuff, it feels pretty raw and tragic. But ultimately, our higher self is going, I honor this process. I honor this growth. I honor this healing. I honor this acceptance. I, it, this is a beautiful, beautiful process. It's mm. your perception on it. And that's the other thing, you know, it's it's how do you perceive your healing? Yeah, there's nothing glamorous about it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it can be pretty tough, but on a on a, a grander scale, he who heals himself is healing others. All right. Yeah. So this this really is beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. Yes, it is it is um you know, I, I find that that um, the the journey of authenticity is is what shifts and changes ourselves and those around us. Mm. You know how we can be truly authentic in ourselves is the process of surrendering as well, surrendering at all those things that we have have been taught to be, conditioned to be. Yeah, that's not who you are. Yeah. Who you are is what you are inside. If only you allow Absolutely. yourself to see that, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, I just before we kind of I know we, we, we're obviously going to be finishing soon, but, you know, there's something I want to share about the surrendering process of the divine feminine. And I feel like it's important I share this last bit. Through the act of surrendering, there is a massive, massive act of self-love there. OK. Mm. And I want to say that for anybody that might be thinking, okay, all right, so what if I surrender and I do all this process and then after I've surrendered, I have, again, the betrayal, the abandonment, the, you know, what happens then, okay? And that's a very valid question. It's a very valid question. But I'd like to say something really beautiful. Through this actual act, and through the, the process of self-love that takes place, that those types of feelings and those types of emotions can't and don't exist anymore once you go into that place, okay? Because there's no more fear. And anything that happens is all part of the healing journey. And you wouldn't be going back to you've abandoned me, you've broken my heart, you've done all of those things, because it's evolved to such a different level, yeah. that it's it, it, it carries on evolving on such a different level, those type of mm. feelings are kind of so yesterday, darling. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you've done that work, it's moved on to something a lot more heavenly a lot more heavenly, a lot more powerful, a lot more 5D, actually. That's probably a really good uh, way to explain it. You know, yeah. you've shifted from the 3D kind of ideas, feelings, emotions into a much more evolved, higher level of the 5D. So that surrendering takes you there, takes you there. Yeah. And I feel, I do feel like um, in some ways these are layers as well. You know, we all heal the deep, deep stuff and the the core wounds around abandonment and and um, rejection and things like that but there will be there, there might be still remnants of it that pop up here and there at times but mm. it just doesn't affect us in the same way does it because we're more at no, that, that no, place no. of peace isn't it yeah you you start to see it as growth mm. you know i read read something the other day it's like you move from oh my god why is this happening to me to Oh my God! What am I learning from this? <laughs> yeah, why is it? Why is it happening for me? You know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I always love that one. I always love that one. So, where can we find out more about yourself and your work um, before we close out this interview today? Andy, do you know um, I have my personal website, which is cascagraham.com. 
okay um, and um, a lot of my uh, one-to-one -one work and my workshops is on there as you know um, I also have my academy which is the Tranquil Garden Academy again it's the tranquilgardenacademy.com um, I have a Facebook group uh, which actually used to be called Mindfulness for Mental Health um, but it's now called Mindfulness and Metaphysics for um, health support okay so it's kind of changed because I wanted to bring in a healing aspect to the page um, so the mindfulness for mental health kind of restricted me a little bit um, because yeah there's going to be regular uh, healing workshops on there as well um, and then my Facebook my Facebook profile Instagram it's all Casca Graham um, and my I've got a YouTube channel which is Casca Graham Earth Angel so yeah. yeah you can find me in an array of different places so yeah so what i do is i'll, I'll post your links below this youtube video <laughs> as i always do as, as as many as i can or mm. or the the most yeah. important ones so that people can then connect yeah. with you from there you know um yeah. but um as always as always it's been a real pleasure to you know connect with you today speak about you know the mm. surrendering of the divine feminine surrendering itself and embracing love yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. So. Beautiful. And um, Andy, thank you so much uh, for inviting me to be a guest on this amazing show. And I send you so much love and I send everybody so much love from my heart to your heart. And um, yeah, thank you. And, and thank you again, Casca. And um, thank you all for tuning in to the show again and the podcast. Um, I do look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Um, and um Take care, much love, and uh, I wish you all the best on your spiritual journey as you awaken to who you are. Take care, much <laughs> love. You can only love another to the extent to which you love yourself. That simple, yet profound truth.